Father, thank you for your love for each one of your children and wonderful testimonies of how you answer their prayers and you take care of them in their daily life. And right now, as we come to your word, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you as the greatest teacher and revealer of truth. I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth and let your words go forth, not in my own human understanding, but in demonstration of your spirit and power. And the faith of your people will rest in you and your power. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah, this morning worship uh, was beautiful. Uh, what uh, Evelyn shared, right? I just felt in the worship that more and more, the Lord is going to reveal himself, manifest himself in a beautiful way, all right, that uh, touching lives to know him and learn how to worship him in spirit and in truth as he touches touch us first, yeah, so that no one here will be left with a religious experience of God, but a real experience, right, and mighty things are going to happen, right, in the anointing, in the glory, in the presence of God, that's why we have physical meeting, all right, although in Zoom, you can, but those in Zoom sometimes have many distractions. <laughs> when you're at home, you tend to, you know, distract to do here and there, right? But when you are here physically, it's different. That's why I think God brought you, Evelyn, here, although you at first appeared in the Zoom, <laughs> but he wanted you to, he wanted to touch you and it's going to be greater and deeper, all right? <clears throat> his presence okay let's continue uh what god is doing so for chinese new year coming oh uh the chinese will be saying this is the year of i don't know what <laughs> pig or, or kite or rabbit or what ah rabbit so for us believers this is the year of of oh, the camel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you want to align with that kind of uh, thinking, all right, what cat, what dog, and whatever, a cow or, or pig, then we are the year of camel. Okay, so next time when, when Chinese New Year, they greet you, oh, the year of uh, rabbit, you say, yes, year of camel. <laughs> and we're going to see what, even more, what is the, the camel represent. Okay, so this morning, arise and run. The gimel is chasing you. <laughs> the camel is chasing you, okay? Actually, when we sang those songs this morning, I have totally forgotten about the songs. And when finally, yesterday, the Lord gave me this word, I have forgotten about the song that was decided uh, middle of the week. But God, Holy Spirit knows exactly what he is doing and what he wants to speak to us. Okay, so it's a time to arise again, all right, in the first, uh, uh, the year, 25th 20, September, that we got the vision of the year. <laughs> okay, so over here is not a vision on Vision Sunday, and then the rest of the year, you can't even remember what was it. <laughs> over here, God is doing something, he begins something, you will finish it and complete it according to what he has purpose. So even if you forget it, Holy Spirit and me will be here reminding you. <laughs> okay, so that's the difference. Okay, arise and run. The gimel is chasing you. So the Chinese New Year is what? Fok ah, fok ah. <laughs> right? uh, chase you, right? But today we have the gimel chasing us. Let's go to learn more and more revelation on what and who is chasing you, okay, in this year of pay Gimel. Okay, Gimel, again, all right, a little reminder in case we have forgotten, is the third letter of the Hebrew Aleph bed and a camel represents it. Okay, a camel in the ancient world was valued as a bestower of blessings and benefits. Gimel also represent the Holy Spirit. So a camel, right, look following whatever uh, ancient uh, understanding is one that bring blessings and benefits because they will load a lot of things on the camel and the camel travel through hard, uh, hard situations like the deserts and all that. So no matter how hard it is, how difficult it is, 
to get to you. <laughs> the camel, which represented by the, the whole, is represents the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit will also get it to you. <laughs> so we may think, oh, my circumstances is so difficult, so different, you know. Uh, see, God wants to bless uh, uh, Hannah with 2,000. <laughs> he knows how to get it to you. The camel came and brought it to you. So you may think you've forgotten or how I, how I got my job is only fixed income salary. But then, you know, it does, he doesn't mean that every share will go up or will have right. But God knows what to do. Okay, so the camel will come to you and you will work in signs and miracles. That's why there's the, I found this picture, you know, miracles, you know, uh, of what? Blessing. When the God delivered the Jews, Israelites out of Israel, the Bible says that what? They plundered the Egyptian. What does that mean? They took all their gold, they are this one. Okay, the world, the Egyptian always speak of the world. The world will be, the Lord will bring the camel, bringing in all the things of the world and to his children. Who here are the children of Abba Father? Ah, so they are coming, <laughs> okay? But not just material. Material is part of it, material blessings, but everything supernatural. So that when we share it, like what you all shared today, we know it is God that do it. It's not our own effort. It's not our own ability. It is our God. So, arise, let's look at the prophecy. Isaiah 60. One, which is also a verse one, which is also God's prophecy and God's word for us here in Beauty for Ashes. Arise, shine. <laughs> I think we sang those words today. <laughs> I, I, when I saw the, the song again, I got a shock because this was given to me only last night without thinking of the, uh, the songs at all. Because once we fix the song, I won't go back to it. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Whoa! <laughs> God tells us to shine, all right, to get up, arise. Don't sleep anymore. <laughs> arise, get up, all right. Rosta. Uh, Elsa actually reminded me of the word Rosta, which, which was a word that I, I forgot already when I shared that uh, first vision on September 25th. So you got. Uh, uh, woke up Elsa through that <laughs> powerful time that he, she was here in KL and she went back and listened to the vision I told her go back and listen now you see sometimes I can talk 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 and then people still sleep right <laughs> but the moment the Holy Spirit touched them oh they wake up just like Madeline right once upon a time the Lord just touched her actually not very long ago right last year the first Holy Spirit power please and she today look at her, rose up. <laughs> Very different woman, okay? More and more being transformed. Let the Holy Spirit touch. So do not undermine the work of the Holy Spirit, especially this year. It's the year, the year of the Holy Spirit, the Gimel, the third person of the Trinity. He can do what we cannot do. Right? We can try to counsel someone, don't do this, be like this, come to church. You know? Oh, you do until throat dry or so. <laughs> nothing happened right the moment they come under the anointing and power of the holy spirit call team <laughs> and only 20 minutes all right 15 minutes operation so when uh, elsa went to listen to that sermon again she listened three times <laughs> and the, the word the main word that jumped to her was rosta and then i remember at first i said to her what is rosta then she said, if you preached it in, oh, then it came back to me. Yeah, that morning, either it was a dream or a vision or a word that God said to me, Rosta. And then I said, what is that? Pasta? <laughs> then when I checked, it actually means arise, rise up. And God is bringing again. That's so why I say, even we forget the vision, Holy Spirit will keep on reminding us because he is not, he's going to do something so powerful, miraculous in each one of the lives of the children here. And yesterday, the, the, the revelation of Abba, first person that touched, touched me so much, <laughs> all right, that I didn't realize so intimate that when we obey him, it's not out of force to or have to or what. It's just being so blessed by him, all right, so close to him, we just want to obey and listen to whatever he wants us to do. So, Rosta, arise and shine 
Okay, your light has come. The time is now. Okay, the glory of the Lord is risen upon you as we behold Him. All right, in Corinthians it says, as we worship the Lord, as we behold Christ, as we behold God, more and more as you're coming into the worship, coming into our everyday lives of revelation. Revelation means light. The more we understand God, who He is, light is shining upon us. And when light comes in, you reflect like we are reflectors of the glory of God, whether in worship or during our time of opening the Bible and understanding and getting the revelation. Like every one of you are bright lights in this world, but now will be even brighter than before. You go out there, <laughs> you will shine. There's something in you. That's why even in the spiritual world, I've shared this before, someone told me before, right, in the uh, the the, the demonic world right they can see the 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 mediums and all that who don't know god when a christian comes towards them they can see light a very bright light and sometimes even the cross yeah because they are in darkness right and under the devil so we are lights in this world bright with the glory of god and the glory of god has come upon us for behold the darkness cover the earth and deep darkness the people so yes, there is a darkness over the world, over people who do not know God. So yes, sometimes we feel sad by their passing on, right? By the things that, you know, happen to them because they don't know the Lord Jesus, right? But thank God, while the darkness is covering the earth, while bad things are happening out there, which is not because of Christ, but because of uh, the devil, we, the Lord is rising over us. Okay, for a purpose. Why? Light shines brightest in the light or in the dark? Yeah, in the dark. So we are not meant to just shine while we are together. <laughs> okay, we are to shine out there. Right, we come here and we get into the presence, the anointing of God, and we go out there in the dark. The world is in darkness. Okay, and they need the light. That's why Jesus came and said, I am the light of the world. Okay, so Christianity or being uh, in the glory is not just in the church. We feel wonderful, but there's a purpose. Why God give you revelation to go out into the world and roof God shine so bright, right? The darkness cannot cover it. They have to come to that light. Yeah, the Lord will rise over you and his glory will be seen upon you his glory is all his blessings all right his yeah that's just like the children of israel the glory of god was seen upon them they plundered the egyptians they were not weak things change all right when god's glory upon you the gentiles shall come to your light who shall come to your light Ah, you got it already. Unbelievers. Why I don't like the word pre-believers is it causes us to become like, you know, don't realize that they are actually unbelievers. They are lost. Because you think pre-believers may sound nicer. It's not about sounding nicer. It's about realizing that they are in the dark. They are in the world and they will die if they don't know Jesus, if they don't believe. So the Gentiles, the unbelievers, okay, will come to your light when we shine right they will come they will come and see and say to you abigail there is something about you i want to know you that's what happened to me in my office i shared before a uh, long time ago when i was still working in this legal firm so after a while there all right uh, i didn't say much except they know that i'm a christian my colleagues and all that then came a day the hardest of the, the people there, which is their accountant. <laughs> she came over to me lunchtime and then she said, I want to know the Jesus that you, you know, that you, you, you know. A few of them, one was a, a, another lawyer's secretary at a different time. And there were many other Christians there. But they came to me and said, can you lead me to know Jesus? The light, they will come to that light. If your light is burning bright, 
And that light is not our own effort. It is us beholding Him, letting His revelation, letting Him change us. Like Madeline, you change without you knowing. <laughs> right? Your face shone. Elsa said it, you look different right? than the first time she saw you. Okay? Each one will begin to shine when we allow the glory of God to fill us, to rise over us. All right? So, those who never smiled before, right, will begin to smile, will begin to laugh. That's the glory of God. Because in the office, don't you think there are a lot of depressed people there? <laughs> yeah? A lot of depressed people. A lot in darkness. A lot who are miserable, worry, stress. And then comes in the Christian more stressed than them. <laughs> Where is the light? <laughs> right? So that's where why we need the anointing, why we need the revelation. Wow, you are shining. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> okay. Kings to the brightness of your rising as we rise up. Kings, that means people in authority will even come to you and say, I want what you have, whatever it is. There was a, there's a sad thing, I don't want to mention the church, but thinking of it, yeah. Uh, Elsa was sharing something to me about this particular church, and then they put some uh, meditations, I don't know what is it, and the people were into, you know, make it into like uh, cards and all that. And the people were grabbing it and asking for more as if it was a good luck charm. <laughs> well, any type or not, other type. Sad, right? What actually the word of God is, is meant to be a revelation in our heart, not a good luck charm. So many people get like good luck charms, you know, and put inside their house. It's the same. If we put, without understanding why we put the word of God there, it is the same as why the world put the good luck charms all over their house. But today, Jesus is our good luck charm, right? And it is He lives inside us. He brings the joy out of our lives, yeah? That the world is attracted to that light, not just a thing. Lift up your eyes all around and see, right? See what? What do you all see? <laughs> what do you all see? What do you see? Lift up your eyes. What do you see? God. Really? <laughs> what do you see? Spiritual eyes. Okay. They all gather together. This is a prophecy, meaning that hasn't happened yet. It's a prophecy of the children of Israel coming back together as a nation. So this was prophesied before 1948. So yet, Isaiah the prophet asked them to tell them prophecy. So that's why when we speak the word of God, when we tell what God is happening, you need to see. You need to see. Vision is about something that doesn't happen, but it's going to happen. All right? And that's why when it's just put at the cover of a phone, after a while, you change to another selfie. <laughs> right? Because you cannot see that vision that the pastor of your church, whatever church it is, right, has got it from the Lord, but the people cannot see. So together, we're going to see. That's why it's very important for a pastor to be able to impart that vision, all right, for a particular year or for, for a particular time, right, to the people. So because today, God works together with the people. It's not the pastor alone. It is with the people that God has gathered together for a purpose, all right? That's why vision is very important. Vision is see, see, right? Ah, so you want to see. See what? <laughs> Not see God, eh? See, they all gather together. See what is going to happen, okay? If you cannot see what's going to happen, how is it God going to bring it to happen, right? What healing is going to happen? So that's why the meditation is for you to meditate the scriptures that tell you of what God is doing, in your life and in around you, what is going to happen? You need to see, right? Without a vision, my people perish. So the vision is not 
Jesus appear to you <laughs> and then tell you, oh, Hannah, do this. No, it's a vision from the word of what he described is about to happen. Can you see that Jesus is coming? Can you see what is he doing? So this is what prophecy is all about. As he open our eyes, he touch you as we listen, as we hunger for him. All right, he will open our spiritual, spiritual eyes. So he said, they all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. It is seeing the people coming. All right, seeing for, for the Jews at that time, it was, they were asked, they were, uh, Isaiah prophesied that they will be coming back. They will be coming back. They will be coming back, sons and daughters of God. That's why we need to see first before it happened. So can you remember what happened here in Blessing Jewels? In the beginning, there was only two of them. <laughs> yeah, Rachel and Joseph. And then teachers used to go inside the room there, right? <laughs> what happened? That is, no, cannot see. You cannot see that there are people coming in. There are more youth coming in, same as there are more uh, adults coming in. Okay? But at that point of time, cannot see, right? So that's why I go inside the small little room, because that's what you thought. It's going to be only two of them, or maybe when uh, uh, Evelyn Ghost's children come, at that time it was like they cannot come like that <laughs> because of uh, objection, right? See? You're not seeing in the spirit, right? But before they came, I say, oh, come out. <laughs> come out. Put a bigger space because they are coming. They are coming. The sons and daughters are coming. And that's where you need to see according to what God say, not according to just the natural realm. And say, this is it. That's it. In the world, that's why they are trying to help people to see also. Vision, they call it. Okay? And that's where they work, but they work by their own effort to build the tunnel. <laughs> right? To come out. But today, we work according to the vision that we see what God say in His Word, He will do. And it has, to the Israelites, the Jews, it has already come to pass, the prophecies. A, a nation shall be born in one day. In one day, 1948, the nation of Israel was born. Before that, all the prophecies that were going towards that, telling them that. So when we serve the Lord, when we are in God's kingdom, one thing that we have that the world doesn't have, because the world is in darkness, we are in the light, right? In the light means you can see. It's you can see the spiritual kingdom. You can see what God is doing. While they say, I cannot see, ah, it's only you, me. <laughs> no, you see, all right? So imparting the vision of what God is doing in your life. So I see Magdalene bringing more people, right, to the kingdom of God. Every one of you are fruitful, you, right, bringing, uh, you, okay, Evelyn Go. <laughs> okay, because those of you here won't know who I'm referring to. Yeah, I can see. Right, spiritually in the vision right, of, of the kingdom of God that God will use you to bring. It may not happen now because we are so limited by this time and space and also by the physical realm. That's why we are learning to come out of this physical realm and to see from God's realm. And how can we see that? From His Word and by His Spirit, the Gimel enlightening us. The Gimel or Holy Spirit enlightened means what? It bring you revelation, okay, of things that are have not yet manifested but are going to manifest. So when you even in tithing and offering, when you tithe and offer, tithe with seeing that your money is not just flying away. <laughs> it is invested in God's bank and God's word says he is going to open the windows of heaven and pour out. So see, see, all right. Arise, lift up your eyes and begin to see the spiritual realm. It may not happen today, so it's as it, as we are, because we are in this physical realm, but to, it's in God's timing. All right, God's timing. Even you invest in the bank, they're not going to give you your interest immediately, right? They say, hey, today I put, uh, tomorrow can I withdraw? <laughs> then they say, you better go just put the money under the bed. <laughs> 
right? So there is a time, also a test of our faith and trust in Him. And when the time comes, zoop, 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 the time is coming. See, the camels are coming all around you. They are coming together. Okay, your sons and daughters will be nursed at your side. And you shall see again. You see, you need to see. If you don't see, you miss out the blessing. And flow together, and thy heart shall swell with joy and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea, oh Mayim, will, shall be converted unto thee. Convert, eh? So we all know the word convert, right? From US dollar to RM. <laughs> yeah, God is going to convert your whatever little into much of abundance. God is in the work of converting <laughs> converting all right changing and trying all our former disappointments and all that change into joy or our mourning into laughter no more because that's all god who is the converter holy spirit right god okay so the abundance of the sea they are coming the forces of the gentiles shall come to you Wow, it's a prophecy, okay? It's happening. Flow together means be radiant and sparkle, be cheerful. So even in our natural, we cannot be cheerful. So wonderful, Holy Spirit put you under there and give you the uh, the laughter and the joy. <laughs> you can say, this one, uh, no matter what I do, what I say, also cannot laugh one. <laughs> okay, feel so sad every time, sad, sad, sad. Because why? The emotion, because of the thoughts, always thinking, all the things that had not yet happened also. <laughs> Sometimes we worry ahead of time. And that one can see, or that one everyone can see. Uh, <laughs> can see what is going to happen like, uh, you know, 10 years time, you know, what will happen uh, to my family, to my children. That one seems to be able to see, but you're seeing the wrong thing. Seeing what the devil is telling you. All the bad things that are going to happen and not yet happen. Okay, that's why uh, there's a verse there, right? The, the righteous are bold as a lion, but the fearful, they run, even nobody is chasing them. <laughs> why? Because of their thoughts. They have been led by the devil with thoughts about a future that is scary. So we need to come back to God's word and see from his word a future that is wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Yes, Madeline? Yeah. Wonderful things are happening, but we see, okay, forces of the Gentiles come together. So cheerfulness is coming together like a river flowing with the joy of the Lord that will bring you out and be radiant. Actually, this word, we are flowing together, radiant, the church of Jesus Christ. Radiant. Then they say, why are you always laughing and smiling? <laughs> because it is weird to the people in the world because they have so many problems then don't you have any problem you say well i have a father heavenly father takes care of all the problems you want also can <laughs> right now i lead you to know this heavenly father isn't that the difference yesterday i was sharing that verse right is that jesus said to them the unbelievers the unbelievers are concerned of all these things of the world their children of money of all the things of the world the work the family Every day, these are in their mind because they cannot see. The devil have caused them to close their eyes and only see the physical world. All right, all the concern. But God is coming in by the Holy Spirit to open our eyes. That's why it's the year of the camel, the gimel, which is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit came. Jesus said, I go up there, I send the Holy Spirit. He will be the spirit of truth to unveil the truth. Right? All hidden, all blah, blah. Now, open eyes, clear, ready, okay? To see what God is doing, who your heavenly father is, that who will take care of you, okay? To see the future. All of you, we are prophetic. That's why the Holy Spirit, when we receive Jesus, we receive the spirit of prophecy, isn't it? Because he is prophetic. He can see the future. So you can see the future. You can read the future. No need the palm of your colleague to show to you ah Ruth show me my future can you read or not say can I can read your future if you come to know Jesus your future is bright without him your future is dark <laughs> that's simple it's according to the Bible 
Yes, we just prophesy according to the Bible, what the Bible says. That's why you need to know what the Bible says, right? Because the Bible is a book of prophecy. And every single prophecy has already been fulfilled except the last one. So it says, let's, we're going to like a sheen of a running stream. I look at like new, everything Elsa did for us, new one. Okay, to flow and assemble together. So when the whole church, the body of Christ, flow together, radiant. Whoa, that's why the river is going to flow and all the trees that are around there are going to receive life. But if this river, one flow this side, one flow that side, then how the other trees, they're going to receive that life, right? They're going to flow together and they see a river and a pond, then go into the sea, will be converted to thee. Okay, the forces of the Gentiles will come to you. What is the meaning of forces? Kayu. You all remember the word Kayu? Taught a long time ago. Okay, it is, it means resources, army, wealth, virtue, valor, strength. We'll be learning the Aleph, the strength of an ox. Double Aleph in the word Abba. Ability, activity, army, what else? Goods, riches, power, substance. Of who? The Gentiles. Like the Egyptians like that. They are coming to who? <laughs> the forces of the Gentiles. Shall come to you shall come to you evelyn go shall come to you rebecca shall come to you Ruth. shall come to every one of you who are the sons and daughters of god all right they're coming to you what is that all the wealth in the world okay so you have to see first right it's because not yet happen <laughs> that's prophecy okay but you don't see how to happen the multitude of camels shall cover thee Verse 6, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah all day from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. When we know, look at all these camels coming to you. That's why you're moving to the land, right? So camel can come. <laughs> camels are uh, associated with animals that carry burdens and also that bring benefits so when they bring through the rough remember again the rough terrain that's why they need camel so you can go and study more about camel in the natural soul right because in the in the bible that means the holy spirit has no not no difficulty that is too difficult for the holy spirit to to uh, go through and bring it to you you say, oh, too difficult. My situation is too difficult. Cannot change already, you know. This, this, but God can convert and change. Holy Spirit is more powerful, right? They will cover you. John the Baptist was clothed with camel hair. Yeah, totally covered with the anointing. That's another aspect of knowing. Before all the material blessings, okay, but because we are no more after the material blessings. That's why God can entrust you with material blessings, right? The tithing and the offering, understanding it, bring us out from the greed, out from trusting in our own effort and ability. And God says, these people, I can cover them and bring to them. Because remember, we are blessed to be a... Yeah, you won't be keeping it for yourself. You'll remember that it comes from God. Every single blessing comes from God and we honour Him. So, but God see that honour and He's bringing all this. So camels can come in the form of men and women, can come in the form of the wealth of the Gentiles, all right? The Kayuk, armies, people. They will show forth the praises of the Lord. So the camel, you can see the gimel there, or gamal in Hebrew, with the mem, uh, favorite, uh, Ruth, Ruth God's favorite letter, mem. Mem is abundance, all right, of the sea, gamal. So the camel is a beast of burden as well as for transport. It will take you to places, isn't it? You can ride the camel. So this year, a year of the camel, is the Holy Spirit taking us 
not just to do sightseeing <laughs> because there's no not much purpose in that although there's nothing wrong with that right but there is a purpose right yes so you say one huh? preach huh? <laughs> out of your mouth <laughs> got hurt okay I, elijah said she will be going preaching <laughs> Now, Lagi cannot run with it. Everyone heard it. Okay. And he is for benefit, to, to win, to deal bountifully, to recompense, to reward. He's going to reward each and every one of you for your faithfulness, right? Or trusting him. That's the camel. When the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem and a very great company and camels that bear spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. And when she has come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. So, what is Solomon famous for? Huh? Wisdom! wisdom when the people of god begin to move in wisdom making wise decisions making wise conclusions according to god's word what will happen the camels will come <laughs> right they'll be attracted to your wisdom so there will be the you'll be the one in the office who will have the wisdom to solve problems the boss also cannot solve the wisdom of God is what attract the blessing. What people coming for is wisdom. When they look at someone and they want to learn from that someone because that person happens seems to have a wisdom that they do not have. What they say from their mouth, what they do has great results. Changes their life, can solve the whole company's problem. And who will God give this wisdom to? his sons and daughters who will learn the word read his word because the wisdom come from his word the revelation of his word not just being able to quote scriptures but through the word and the holy spirit is very much needed to bring the understanding of that word to you correct so many people have the word of god but they don't do anything about it because they don't have the revelation and the understanding that when we act upon this word something wonderful is going to happen so the wisdom on his people wherever you are it is you think the boss like you very much and increase increment give you increment it's because you look very pretty or handsome no you got a wisdom there right whatever you do in that place that you're allotted prosper you make wise decisions for the company, for your department. And where does it come from? If we are children of God, it's from God, right? You make wise decisions for your family. Your husband, your wife will recognize, eh? Remember, we are coming to Proverbs 31, which is what? The wise woman, right? The wife, the woman who is wise, not the Nab uh, Nabal. <laughs> Not the foolish wife, right? Who just simply make decision, all right? But the wise woman, the wise man, and what will happen to this? Right? God sought, will attract blessing. That's why your boss increase your pay or give you bonus and all that. Remember, it's not our personal this one. It's when you have wisdom. The Queen of Sheba is a very rich queen. But she came to consult Solomon because of his wisdom, right? Kings will come to consult you. But where do you get the wisdom from? It doesn't come automatically, drink one, shake, and then the wisdom come in. <laughs> no, it is constantly coming into the word of God, constantly letting the Holy Spirit have full control in our lives. Then we make decisions led by the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can tell you things about office, things about work. And He also tell you, smile. <laughs> smile. The wisdom, smile in your office is a wisdom. Right? When my son started to work after his college, right? He was a very he's a very cheerful boy, right, that time. And Whatever pressure, they're working in a production company, production as in the filming industry, and also they have their 
fair share of uh, stress because once they do a shoot, they don't sleep continuously for a few nights. And one time I saw him there, I said, wow, three nights he didn't come back because they all have to sleep there. But he got the favor of the boss, which is very strange. The boss will, you know, in the stress and shoot, will ask everyone to do work. And then we'll ask him to come up, <laughs> have a drink with him. Why? Because he helps the boss to release stress <laughs> by just being himself, you know. So that is a wisdom, that is an anointing there that is not from the world. And the bosses will recognize it, all right. And the things that he say, although he's younger, the boss take it, take what he say. Okay, that's the wisdom of God upon you in your family, in your working place. They will come upon you, right? Evelyn Go, do not be afraid, right? As you go into the word, Jesus is our wisdom. Today we know that Jesus is made unto us in 1 Corinthians uh, 1 verse 30. In him, Christ is made unto us. First, wisdom, then righteousness, then redemption, sanctification. This is what Christ is to us. But what is Christ now today? He is seated, technically he's seated there, but now he is with us in the word. <laughs> the spirit of Christ is in our heart, but Christ is the word. Remember, the word was made flesh. Okay, so when you read the Bible, you are getting the wisdom of Christ. Okay. So it's very powerful that will bring in the abundance, that will bring in the favor of God in your life, whether it's your working place, that will cause you like the increment, the bonuses and all to be different because of wisdom, because the boss didn't employ you to look pretty <laughs> in the office. All right. He put you for that job. He wants wisdom. Right. And today it is again not about how many certificates you have. If you read uh, a little bit sometimes I will uh, hear, right? The, the, the trend has changed in the interviews and all that. They are not looking for someone just with a certificate, just, not, just know how to type or just know how to do accounts. They are looking for men and women who have some wisdom, <laughs> who can make good decisions for their company instead of cause their whole company to... <laughs> right? These are the people the world is outside the world, the Gentiles. It's okay. They are the one whom we are going to plunder. God is going to plunder them for his sons and daughters as the sons and daughters are filled with wisdom, Christ's wisdom. Amen? That <clears throat> so you know where the abundance is coming from, right? Yeah, that's why we need to let the wisdom of God fill us. This is what the Lord says to his anointed whose right hand I take hold to subdue nations and strip kings of Amman to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. When we let the light shine, all right, God rise upon us and have his wisdom, abundance of the sea come to you, what will happen? God is for you. That's why we need to know God is for us. We are relying on him, not our own wisdom or human wisdom. O doors will be open. Doors will be open. Okay, doors of opportunity, doors of uh, whatever, blessings. Suddenly, closed doors all begin to open. For we need to open the safe deposit box before you can get to your money, right? <laughs> if it's inside the box, you need to open the box, right? So what happened is just why Jesus is the door for us to enter into the spiritual realm, to enter into another dimension. So many things are coming, but... Doors are closed. And God said to this year, he will open these doors for his children if we will look to him. All right? <clears throat> I go before you and level the mountains. Mountains are like obstacles. You may see obstacles, big obstacles, some may be a form of disease, right? The, the, the Lord has leveled that disease in your life, right? Magdalene, no more already. It's like a mountain. To many people, it's a mountain. Right, but it's leveled by the Lord, and there can be other things as well. Okay, all the wrong thinking are mountains, right? Certain situations are like mountains, but who is going to level it? God, your God, when you acknowledge Him as God, as your God, right? And I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through iron. I have, 
I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places. So all these obstacles, God will level it. And then he will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places. So where you hide your money, God knows. <laughs> where the boss hide, he knows. You, he, God knows. Okay, and what he said, he will give it to you. He knows where is the wealth. We don't have to think where are my resources are. Then we are limiting God by saying that this is the only resource I have. But God says, I have, I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places you never know. So that share was stored somewhere very secret, right? <laughs> Until she also don't know. But God knows. And in the right time, you bring it out. We give it to you. These are, this is our God, the possessor of heaven and earth. That's why he knows where his things are. <laughs> okay. Sometimes we hide, hide, hide until we don't know where, right? But God knows where. The angels also know that you may know. So all this is for what? Why he do all this for us? That I am. And what is the Lord? In Hebrew, <laughs> oh, yo, I almost fainted. <laughs> Yahweh. Okay, the Lord means Yahweh. I have the youth. Yeah, the youth is the powerful hand of God. He knows he can do what is impossible to man. Behold, just see. Remember? Behold. Behold his love. Behold his power. And who summon you by name. That's so, why uh, amazing, uh, I think among the the service group, right? This revelation came, is it? Yeah, it was at that time, right? To, to me, so some of you were not there. As I was talking to the service about this, about the vision of BFA, and then what is the vision for your own, own life? And then the Holy Spirit just said, it is by their name. The name that God has been changing a lot of names or adding. Your name has a meaning. That is your personal destiny for that name to come out. It's not just nice name, Ru, nice name, Abigail. There, we learn the Hebrew letters, even Magdalene, I check out already. But right now, I cannot remember. We have to check <laughs> the, the, Hebrew, the Hebrew letters. Okay, It has a meaning and that will be your personal destiny for that manifestation of that name, right? Of that Hebrew word, because we know the Hebrew words are powerful. So why did God spend that time to change all your names? And it's very stressful for me in that sense, right? <laughs> because names are destinies, right? It means your destiny. Abram was changed to Abraham and he changed his whole destiny from father of no, no, nobody to a father of multitudes. Yeah, so miracles happen. Right, where we understand, and then together we come, and the Lord gave me also at that very moment while, while, while teaching the, the service that He is raising up an army of different pow powerful men and women of God. See, all the characters, all the names here <laughs> are put together into God's powerful spiritual army for these last days to shine as lights in the world there will be many hannahs there will be many evelyns many ruths many magdalene's many rebecca's many abigail's and many elijah's in this army and each of these people right have their different unique qualities in their lives from their hebrew letters as well as if they are a person there okay from their character of the the name of the person inside this is the army of God. That's why you look at all these men and women of God in the Bible. And why is it happening here in this ministry? And God put it together, right? For a purpose, the last day army. So there may be others out, outside, praise the Lord. But over here, this is what God is doing. He's raising up. So Elijah, why he choose you all who are like, you are really not that person. <laughs> Why? Because when he changed you, he convert you into that person that he named you, every, you, including everyone, will say, it is a work of God. Because the glory will not go to men. God will not share his glory with men. 
he will transform you until your wife, your mother, father cannot recognize you. <laughs> yeah, according to that name. Of course, today we have Jesus as well, the name above all names. So while we have the uniqueness, God don't remove that part because he also gives us gifts according to uh, different people. But in the end, we all have the nature of Christ and we will live like Christ. All right, but that name is unique. So from Elijah, the Elijah law, the human one who is full of head knowledge, was full of, God's going to transform you into a man of God, one from the heart, because you prophesy one who fears God, who knows him, who walks personally with him, who is broken man of God. Yeah, well, I was uh, doing a worship just now, I had a word for you, Elijah, that God will bring you, will raise you up, and he will cause you a, a broken heart and a contrite spirit, I will not let go. I will not uh, put aside. God will going to break you. <laughs> yes, not me, God, okay? Holy Spirit is going to do that until he is a broken man. A broken man means not that, you know, your limbs are all not working. Okay, your spirit is broken. Your spirit has, you know, no more of self inside. You want God only. God is coming on. That is the broken and the contrite spirit. Not the one we go around like looking like a cucumber or what. <laughs> no, no, right? But your spirit, that means that time God can touch you and you can. He will use you to touch many men and women who are in the world of darkness. Amen? Amen. Okay, so that you may know that God is, the Lord is Yahweh. And he summoned you by name. He's going to call you by name. Riches, right? He'll bring you the riches. The hidden riches is matmon, a lot of two double M. <laughs> Actually, in the Hebrew, it means hidden treasure, also means money as well. Yeah, the riches. But first, we have the riches of heaven, and then we have the riches on the earth. But here, the camels are bringing all these blessings, so don't worry about money anymore. So why? Psalm 23, verse 6, Why would I fear the future? Only goodness and mercy or tender love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterwards, when my life is true, I'll return to your glorious presence to me forever. So this is very interesting when I saw this. We have Aleph. Bet and Gimel, right? So, turn it the other way around. After God, the Father, God, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit came to us, the Dalet, the last one, and we got converted. <laughs> All right, that's, that's a good conversion, right? From death to life. How would you like to convert people from death to life? Right? Now, on this way, back to the Father, back home to Father, as we turn back, because the Hebrew letters is in cycle. So you can go this way, and then we can go backwards also, and then start another cycle. So the Gemel, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, God, and we run towards the finishing, back to the Father. This is the turtle. So even you are slow also, still can make it. But I like this one is the bunny. <laughs> Elsa, but she's not here today when she listened to it. Elsa is inside here. We are to run. Run. Okay? No more crawl. You can crawl a bit. Lah. Then the other, the one who run will push you. <laughs> because we are all heading for the finishing line. The gimel, the camel, is an animal of movement. All right, journey, walking through a journey. So we have this journey on earth. Jesus went up to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit. So to help us walk this journey, run. <laughs> okay, some walk, some crawl, but we can run because we have the gimel. And first, chases bring us back to Abba first. When we go back to Abba, that's when we got saved, right? Supposed to go back to Abba, <laughs> all right? But now we know the meaning of Abba. Then... After that, from Abba's throne, we come back into the world to bring others back to Abba, all right, to their father. Okay, so the turtle shall become a rabbit. Oh, year of the rabbit, is it? <laughs> oh, okay, so it's good also. Camel and rabbit, run with the camel, okay? Praise the Lord. 
This one is good. And hope does not disappoint. Hope's love has been poured in the hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So let's see this. It is the love of God. So you see in this verse, Romans 5, 5, got three, the Trinity inside. First, the love of God, which is the Father, Aleph, poured into our hearts. How? Through the Son, right? Because of Jesus, which is the bed. Aleph, bed, and the Holy Spirit, Gimel, who was given eh, the, to us. Okay. So I like this Gimel here with all the camels. And I think it's resting on a pillow. <laughs> so why? When we are walking this journey, we walk in rest, not stress. Okay? You can rest your head on the bosom of Jesus. Okay? So that we don't think so much. <laughs> rest and let the Gimel, the Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us and bring all the goodies for us, both in the spiritual and the natural. How? Acts chapter 10, verse 38. So what is this journey about? Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet. So we are here, right? Now we enter and the Gimel take us to back to Father and then start the whole cycle. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. So the anointing is for what? And how, what did Jesus do? He went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. This is what the anointing is for, same as in Isaiah 61, right? It was anointed and appointed. So when you have Holy Spirit anointing and power, Jesus did what? He went around doing good and healing all. So supernatural miracles. And Jesus said, Verily I tell you, whoever believe in me will do the works that I do. So what did Jesus do? He went around doing good or doing bad or don't bother what's happening, <laughs> not doing anything. So he did something, right? So grace is not do nothing. It's a whole totally lie of the devil that grace is just sit down and do nothing. Right? Jesus did something. He went around doing good because he was filled with Gimel, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit fills us, we will do what Jesus do and greater things because I'm going to the Father, right? Because when he went to the Father, the next thing was, yes, he sent the Holy Spirit. Now to help us do, I tell you, I'm going to do what is best for you. That's why I'm going away. The Holy Spirit cannot come to help you until I leave. But after I'm gone, I will spend, send the Holy Spirit to you. And so many believers ignore the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so sad, right? Because He is the one who come to help us, to live inside us, to give us the supernatural power and ability to help us also to understand the Word. To give us revelation well, all the time you, you can quote the scripture for 10 20 years and have no revelation it doesn't change your life revelation changes our lives all right so the holy spirit come to help us hebrews 12 1 such a large cloud of weaknesses is all around us so we must get rid of everything that slow us down <laughs> like the turtle right especially the sin that just won't let go and we must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us this year the year of the camel run arise rosta and run because the glory of god is risen upon you magdalene god give you supernatural power to run this race all right with his glory run and it says we decide okay again our decision the decision is ours the wise decision would be Let's overtake the turtle <laughs> by his power, by his might. If God said, I've caught you, you know, come do this. Remember yesterday's Abba's message? We are not doing because we have to, but we realize how much and how close God is to us. He will help us. Holy Spirit will help us. So we just do with joy. All right. And he will put in the supernatural power and ability right, for you to run this race which is ahead of us. So your real Elijah is up there chasing you. <laughs> Say, when this Elijah low <laughs> will do what I did <laughs> and more, 
right? Because you have Christ and Holy Spirit. But while we are running this race, do not be distracted. Okay? So when anyone run a race, there are distractions, right? If we understand we are running a race, then let go of all the distractions. Anything that can stop you. Okay? So that we can fix our eyes on Jesus. <clears throat> like Jesus fixed his eyes on the cross. Keep our eyes on Jesus, who leads us and makes our faith complete. He endured the shame of being nailed to a cross because he knew later on he would be glad he did it. It's like today. We serve the Lord. Today may be a little bit difficult for us in our situation or whatever, but we know later on, when we reach heaven, we'll be glad, Ruth. We'll be glad, Evelyn, yeah, that you listen to voice of Abba, the Holy Spirit, to serve him. Yeah? Now he is seated at the right side of the God's throne. And where will we be seated? Ah, next to him, right? So keep your mind on Jesus who put up with many insults from sinners. Mm, right? If they persecute, Jesus said, if they persecute me, they will persecute you. They means the world when you shine for Jesus, when you put your foot down and say, this thing I cannot do. Right? You stand up and when you dare and boldly preach the gospel without shame. That is in Romans 1. 16, 17, Paul says what? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? For the gospel is... <laughs> now is the time for me to drink. For the gospel is what? So if you're not sure what the gospel is, then you won't preach the gospel, right? What is the gospel? You say you're going to preach the gospel, right? So what is the gospel? Huh? <laughs> the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then the Gentile. For in the gospel, what is revealed? The righteousness of God. Yeah. See, I have to raise up this help. <laughs> raise up this army for God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Keep put God's word inside. And then when you have the revelation, the gospel is the power of God. If we know that we are doing something that is so powerful, will we not do it? The power that will save people from their lives, will we not say it? Will we not share good news when people are full of fear? The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. They will receive deliverance, they will receive health, they will receive healing, they will receive heaven, they will receive Salvation, be saved from sin, from become a slave to a son. And where is this power hidden? In the gospel. The good news where I say, yes, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is the one who came and died for you. Who we boldly declare something so powerful as that, that can save people from sickness, from sin, from disease, from fear, of inferiority because in it the righteousness of God is revealed because men cannot enter the kingdom of God by their own righteousness and there's so many people in the world today that are living in self-righteousness they cannot enter the kingdom of God they cannot even see the kingdom of God that's why when Jesus came the Pharisees who were living in self-righteousness reject him and then Jesus said, you are blind, blind leading the blind, the blind people. Yeah? But to, to the Gentiles, to the, 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 the sinners, Jesus came to them and they could see Jesus, the good news, the Son of God, and they were saved. Right? So, again, <laughs> again what? <laughs> Romans 1, 16, 17, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for 
<laughs> it the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to whom to everyone who believe first to the Jew then to the Gentiles for in the gospel what is revealed the righteousness of man God is revealed from faith to faith for the just shall live by faith <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if this go this word go deep into your spirit will you dare to share the gospel right with the understanding of the power of the gospel that can set people free for the righteousness god men will have to lay bare before their creator that they can do nothing of themselves because why is it the righteousness of God is revealed? Because the gospel talk about Jesus coming to die for man. That means man cannot save themselves. And therefore, this is the righteousness of God. Men throughout the ages have been thinking, I can save myself. I just be rich, I be smart, I, be the, I can save myself. But this is the righteousness of man. In the gospel is, you cannot save yourself. You need Jesus. And that is the meaning of the righteousness of God being revealed in the gospel. And therefore, it has the power to save man. When a man would say, I cannot save myself, but Lord, believing in you, only you can save me. That removes all kind of self-righteousness. That's the power of the gospel. Understand? <laughs> Tomorrow, repeat again. <laughs> Next Sunday, okay? So, it says, do not be discouraged, right? We got insult from sinners, don't give up. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet. There is the gimel there, regal of him who bring good tidings, the good the gospel. This is the year of Gimel, the year where you will start to walk and run. Okay, run to do what? Bring the gospel, the good tidings that publish peace, that bring peace, that bring good tidings of good blessings. The camels that publish salvation, that say to Zion, your God reigns. Uh, this is the high heel shoe. You can wear high heel shoe, you can wear sport shoe, whatever shoe, right? God says, I can see the beautiful feet in that shoe that will go and walk and run and bring the gospel to others as we have received the same gospel, the powerful gospel from somebody who walked to you, who ran to you and tell you, Ruth, <laughs> Jesus loves you. Yeah. So now we can go and run to another person like the camel, travel in this world, ability to travel, to tell people the good news. Okay, and this is the last slide, right? The gimel chase you to bless you, bless you in abundance of the sea as we walk in his wisdom. Feel, all you need to do is fill yourself with God's wisdom. The rest will come. If you have no wisdom, Mm. <laughs> the blessing come also disappear <laughs> like those people in the world they say right they win a million dollars first prize lottery and within a short while gone because they didn't have wisdom right so wisdom is the principal thing and jesus wisdom jesus is our wisdom so now gimel holy spirit is going to chase after each and every one of you by name elijah abigail hannah rebecca magdalene ruth evelyn go cheng lan uh Pera, elisha ling sarah esther chasing after each one of us just like this holy spirit power feast that is coming and this revelation, I didn't tell Elsa to do this. We put the fireman out, fireman, right? Outside after the fire. Okay. But she went and listened. After that, she caught the, the fire got her because the anointings got different, different. Don't just say, oh, I think uh, I got it already because I can now laugh. Stay. <laughs> there is much more. There is much more. Okay. In the fire. Okay. So she caught that and she put the 
first in the website, right? And then later, she changed this uh, poster to put the man running out of the fire. The Holy Spirit power feasts is an experience of Gimel personally. So whatever it is, don't miss it. Even those who are in Singapore are coming. <laughs> okay, so it's another empowerment of the Holy Spirit to bring to cause the men and women of God to run. When the fire, when you catch fire, do you walk or run? <laughs> yeah, nobody is going to walk when the fire is on their feet. Okay, so that's where today, every Sunday is building up. It's coming very fast actually, time passes. Building up, and I believe on that three days, the fire will be so big and so hot and so powerful, you'll be running, <laughs> running, right? Sometimes it manifests. I've seen before with my very own eyes, right? Uh, people running round and round the whole congregation with a fire. What you saw in YouTube, I already saw it in real life, yeah? The fire can do all this. If you see, Ruth will be doing like this. Oh, <laughs> fire, fire, and they cannot stay still. She has to run around. It's, it's not just one happening. It's all over the world where people will acknowledge the Holy Spirit and what He's doing. And that's when these people are empowered by God Himself, right? To do the work of what Jesus did, you will do as well. So don't look into your weaknesses today. Look at your destiny of who got the army that God is building up, the names of your, of your destinies, and just fill yourself. The Lord is rising upon you. Fill yourself with the Word. Fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. Prepare for victory. <laughs> okay? Don't worry about the devil. He's defeated already. But he will come. He'll come and test you. Right? But he's defeated. That's where you know, need to know that he's defeated from the word of God. And you know how to throw the stone at Goliath. <laughs> Don't throw stone at one another. <laughs> throw the stone at Goliath. Okay? Not at your family, at Goliath. Okay? At the devil. And then march into the promised land. Lay hold of all the wonderful good things, houses you did not build. They're all coming from the camel, the year of the camel as God bring in. And what did Moses or God tell Moses to tell Joshua to lead this second generation into the uh, into the promised land? What did he tell them? What did he God tell in Joshua chapter one? What's the most important thing to do there? Ah. Huh? <laughs> Isn't this the year of the Gimel? What's happening? Right? When you meditate, the Holy Spirit will bring forth the revelation of the word. So don't meditate and chant like a monk. <laughs> okay? Just go slow. All right, Elisha Ling, go slow, verse by verse, meditate until you get the revelation. Then the wisdom comes to make godly decisions or Holy Spirit-led decisions from the meditation. So the meditation is not chanting that gives you power. So you can chant the whole night and no power comes. But if you got a revelation from that verse, from that word that you are meditating, visualizing, and speaking, calling it for, that is the power that will come out. That is to give you the wisdom, right? To make Holy Spirit-led decisions because those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Okay, the Holy Spirit lead you, chase you, run after you. And basically, everything that we do is a result of decision-making. And foolishness is a result of foolish decision. <laughs> Correct? Yeah, so to receive the blessings and everything that God has for us, we need to make wise decisions. Amen? Because one wrong decision can cause us to detour a wasted years. 
of our lives. So I have some wasted years in my life. That's why God put me here so that there's no more time for you all to waste. <laughs> if you just follow to the wisdom of God yeah, and quickly make wise decisions for your life, for your future. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord.